Hey, Tom. What's going on, Pat? Uh, I would like you to repeat after me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I, Thomas Patrick Kelly. I, Thomas Patrick Kelly. Do solemnly swear. Do you solemnly swear? To drop steaming hot takes. <laughs> to drop steaming hot takes. Whenever humanly possible. Whenever humanly possible. All right, let's start the show. All right. Ba -ba -da -da -da. So, Pat. Yes. It's the week after Thanksgiving. Um, yes. Exactly a year ago from this episode, we released episode number three, the monkeys episode. <laughs> yes. Still our best, uh, most listened to episode. Is that right? Or I think so. Yeah. It's good it's stuff. Definitely got the best intro, which we might bring back. We were talking about earlier. <laughs> um, just this utter state of confusion, which has been kind of <laughs> continued throughout. That's our, that's our brand is utter confusion. <laughs> um, but how was your holiday? It was okay. Um, it was, yeah, just okay. It was like a, Actually, it, it wasn't great, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. Maybe not r right this second. Um, but overall, cool. it, I'd I give it a s six out of ten. What about you? Um, mine was good. Uh, no more, no less. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, old, uh, Kevin Lee, an old friend from uh, junior high, visited, and we had a nice time. Showed him around Cincinnati, et cetera, et cetera. Um, since we don't have much to say about our respective holidays, should we let Kyle talk for the first time? In 53 episodes? <laughs> yeah, Kai, how was your Thanksgiving? Yeah, what's up, man? Well, I finally figured out how to turn the mute off on my mic, so... <laughs> it's, a crucial, it's a crucial function. I mean, of, there's uh, there's maybe two buttons on the whole thing, and just decided <laughs> finally to got it. break out the instruction manual, like, you know, men <laughs> fail to do so often. Um, and, uh, but yeah, my holiday was good. Spent some time with the in-laws, came back, had some... Uh, barbecue with my family, with my parents. Ooh. Which was Ooh, is a, that tradition for you? Uh, I think it might might start out to be a new tradition. Uh, we typically go out of town to to Kylie's parents and stay there because there's like five siblings to kind of coordinate. So my parents are usually pretty flexible. And we came back and on Sunday we ate with them and the barbecue seems to be a hit. So I think we might go with that. I like that a lot. My uh, my dad always celebrated like the day after the holiday with um Chinese delivery, and I there was something like super magical about celebrating a day before or after the holiday. It feels like a little rebellious, but also like way less pressure. Um, so I I respect the Sunday barbecue for sure. I love that. It was a nice mix up to have pork instead of uh, the big old fat turkey, but I enjoyed it. Turkey adds stress, man. The many hours of preparation. <laughs> it's uh Will it be moist? Will it be dry? It Will it be moist? Will it be dry? There's just too many variables. So let me ask you guys what you think about my Thanksgiving. Terrible. Uh, it was it was a hundred percent vegan. Hmm. Hmm. I'm a bit of a Ron Whose Swanson. decision was that? Um, not mine. We we hung out with one of Megan's Okay, Megan's coworkers, boyfriend's coworkers, they all work at a vegan restaurant. So it was a Friendsgiving. We like rented out the whole lobby of this apartment building and everyone brought vegan food. And um Yeah. Was it tasty? It was good for vegan food, you know, which is on there its own go. playing field. <laughs> um Yeah. Not that I necessarily missed the turkey, I just missed anything other than Satan or tofu. Um, mm. but overall, good. Megan made really good chili. Um, Ooh. but yeah, chili Still. and barbecue. I'm gonna have to just. I didn't know you were allowed to just totally alter the menu and just <laughs> enjoy the day instead of like being forced to eat a meal that makes you so sleepy. <laughs> like I didn't know people um, out there were eating chili and barbecue just like enjoying themselves. Like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> no rules, man. There are Still no rules, anarchy. and uh, I feel like I've been living in the cave. I think like the I think the Plato's only rule allegory or whatever would be that you're thankful, <laughs> and as long as you're thankful, then it doesn't matter what you eat. That's a hell of a point. Um, and yo, I he's thankful. dropping the hot takes in this episode. <laughs> this is, <laughs> hey, I should have sworn him in first. I yeah. had 53 episodes of hot takes, so <laughs> that's right. Yeah, just built up from just. 
<laughs> Scott didn't totally even let you leave it. Tom's apartment. Just kind of, you're just still there. Um, <laughs> I'm actually in your. But apartment. for those people, oh, <laughs> I guess we do both live in the same city. That's something I'm just now realizing to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah I've been wondering. I mean, I guess. Uh, next weekend when Tom decides to fly in and actually visit us like the terrible friend he is that, yeah. you know, we'll actually be able to meet for the first time, which should have probably happened sooner, but you know, Hey, yes. Um, I guess people who are tuning in just now or this week, Tom and I have been talking for about Tom's, you know, the network that he's launching and everything. Anyway, Kyle will be one of the co-hosts of a new program called captain and Admiral. Am I getting that right? Yep. And, uh, it'll, Premiere in 2018. I don't know how much of the logistics have been nailed down, but this is kind of an introduction uh, slash sound check slash um, p- pretty much planning what we're all going to do next weekend when Tom flies in. But uh, um, yeah, Kyle is here for uh, Tom. Was it were we going to do a unofficial official job interview for the network or? <laughs> sure, I'm into that. <laughs> right. Which most of the questions would be surrounded about Kyle. How do you feel you would fit into our heist scenario? <laughs> Well, I believe uh, my role has already been penciled in as the right. gung ho gunman who likes to kick down doors <laughs> right. and, you know, use larger than thirty round mags to spray rooms with lead. Now, not how e- do you not feel even, about us? You're not oh, even ahead, kicking Tom. doors down. You were literally that, gunning right. holes yeah, into the wall I'm, that I'm become shooting <laughs> the 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 gun. Uh, not the gun. I'm shooting the door out with the bullets. I, I remember now. <laughs> well, there's two kinds of gunman in a heist, right? Like, there's the dude that loves the kaboom, and there's the dude that loves to tell people what he's using to make the kaboom. It's like what you got there is a couple set of you know, and then he describes what's on the bridge. Where the other type of dude would have just blown up a second bridge by the time the first dude. See, I can already tell you what I would do. I'm going to be the kind of guy that's going to tell you what I'm using, even if you ask or not. Be like, oh, yeah, so I got (laughs) to, you know, this gun using this caliber. And you want to know why I use this caliber? Well, it's because it can go through that brick wall, three guys' heads, and then also kill that other guy behind the other wall. (laughs) Nice. I've been talking about caliber since before you were born, kid. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Oh man, great! I love it. So, so you're you like that position in the heist team? I think after that episode aired, well, I mean, when I was sitting there as we were recording, and I could not speak because my mic was on mute, I um, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, man, I wish Tom would actually describe it just a little bit differently because I feel like me oh, and man. Kylie, even though we're very similar in a lot of ways, we also kind of do a yin yin and yang kind of thing. And I feel like very Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you know, she'd be the cold calculated, you know, sniper taking her time, one shot, 40 kills kind of thing. And I'm going to be the 400 shots, maybe one kill just because I just like shooting (laughs) guns. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So is it possible to be like, like, like in a rap posse, there are hype men. Can you be a hype man in a, like a heist scenario or like as a part of a, artillery squad like not very accurate but everyone's just psyched like you're kind of like a cheerleader to a certain degree but just like there for the party i mean and more of an intimidation factor to a certain degree. i kind of picture i mean even though it's more or less out of my character you know or in my personality i feel i see myself as like terry cruz from the old spice commercials that's <laughs> that's the persona that i that i would take on if i was in a heist you know just overly loud i'm the guy blowing our cover but it's okay because the guys that saw me i will still kill uh that's kind of how i picture myself that's that's great are you shirtless i, I well it does do you guys want me to be shirtless because i can get shirtless. it's <laughs> i don't know what are you've you heard about me, this man? workplace but we everyone is allowed to feel as comfortable as they want you can keep your clothes on 100 percent. but i've got baby oil that's all i'm saying I mean, if I, in this high scenario, was as jacked as Terry Crews, I would definitely be shirtless. In my, okay, in my okay. current state, eh, maybe a baggy shirt. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a Kanye, like, uh, bedtime t-shirt, like the PJs that he wears. Or, or just enough utility, you know, like the, the tactical vest and gear to cover my pudge then. <laughs> Do you well, use uh, Old Spice? I do use Old Spice. Whoa. Me too. Okay. Whoa. Me three. 
Well, I mean, Whoa. you know, it's you know from Procter and Gamble in Cincinnati. You gotta be that's true, homeboy. So, that's are we true. now the official Old Spice podcast? I I would say that this this podcast was brought to you by Old Spice. Smell fresh, smell swaggery. But we don't say that because they're. I don't say anything unless you pay me to say it. Essentially. Well, here's so. here's what I'll say. Do you guys do either <laughs> of you guys watch Game Grumps on YouTube? Mm -mm. You told me about it like a year ago. Yeah. But... Yeah. See, watch what Game Grumps. They're a Let's Play channel on YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the guys, his name is Aaron, and his handle is Ego Raptor on most social medias. <laughs> he is infatuated with Wendy's, and he would constantly talk about Wendy's over and over and over again. He would tweet at them, etc. And eventually, he actually got to go to the Wendy's headquarters. And no way. Yeah, yeah. So the <laughs> the free publicity paid off, and he actually got to meet with the chefs and eat a like you know a cooked meal by them, something that was new, kind of not hadn't come out yet. So I don't know. You you, you do something. So like buy Old Spice. Yes, <laughs> buy Old Spice. That's what we're getting. If we got here. to if we got to tour the factory, though, what do you think the best case scenario of that day would be? Would it be like a year's supply of deodorant or like smell a the smell smells? test that went well? <laughs> uh, for me, it would probably be a meeting with Terry Crews. I mean, I would love. Oh wow! I mean, yeah, I guess he just probably works there nine to five. I mean, yeah, <laughs> why, why wouldn't he? Right? Right. He probably busts through the walls and he's like, "Hold <laughs> bars." <laughs> <laughs> I, I do wouldn't mind messing with that percussion setup where they put sensors on his muscles and he plays like a, a full drum kit oh, yeah. with just oh, yeah. his flexing. Is... <laughs> I, so, okay, yeah, that would be a fun day. That would be a fun day. What if he could eagle you like Turk and JD? Ooh, I would that. probably break eagle. several bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he the base of the eagle or is he the top? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, okay. I'd have to be the base. I, wanna, I would want to lift him up. <laughs> I love that visual. If um, if any of our listeners out there are illustrators, if you could draw that for us, I will pay you money. Not much, but just like a little bit. I just want to see Kyle Eagle. You should probably just go on Fiverr. Terry Crews. <laughs> With the great success you, you've had there. I mean, impeccable work. <laughs> oh, little uh, little follow-up. Uh, the girl who stole the photo um, and then drew a dick in the mountain for us. Mm -hmm. she, she messaged me the other day asking if there's any other work I wanted her to do. <laughs> like totally out of the blue. Um, should I go for it? Why not? I mean, the, the worst <laughs> she can end up with is, you know, she takes Terry Crews actual photo, you know, lassos that out on, on Photoshop and then lassos my, you know, face and body off of Facebook and then, <laughs> you know, crudely Photoshop. I mean, you still ended up with it. It doesn't have to be pretty. So you're going with lasso tool rather than pen tool? I mean, I'm not a Photoshop expert. I'm just okay. I'm just throwing okay. ideas. Just I'm giving you okay. five dollars worth of advice on this right now. So I will expect my payment um, <laughs> in my account by midnight tonight for that little tidbit of information. Is that Eastern or Mountain Time? Oh, uh, whatever time works. I mean, if it <laughs> okay. if it helps Greenwich you get meantime. the five dollars in there, Mountain Time, then sure. Okay, awesome. Um, I gotta say, I like your drive, Kyle. You turned this job interview into demanding when Tom gets you money, <laughs> like in a matter of minutes, and that's a power play in half, as far as I'm concerned. Very impressive work. You, you did? Uh, you that's all I you wanted say. me to drop the steamy hot takes, so... <laughs> it's true. Lay them down, man, as frequently as you wish. I mean, this whole, this whole <laughs> thing is, you know, actually, I told Tom to start the podcast network. I've strung him along for over a year. Uh, and just told him, <laughs> you're going to record every week with your best friend, uh, who's actually my best friend, and you're going to do all this work right. for free, and then I'm going to come along whenever the heck I feel like it, and then you're going to edit all my stuff and you know post it up. That's just how it's going to be. Hmm. That's how it happened. Well, it is. So from your perspective, uh, you kind of dipped on it or touched on it just now, but uh, do you, what can you tell us about – the first conversations you had with Tom, the idea for the network, uh, his role, your role, and kind of the show that's been in the works or on the back burner. I don't really know how to phrase it, but 
you know, what brought you here today? How'd you meet Tom and kind of what, what have you been cooking up and what can fans of the network uh, expect out of Captain and Admiral? Do you want the actual take or do you want me to continue following this? You know, I'm the one who dominated Tom and made him do this <laughs> take. Oh, um, let it, let the story be as steaming uh, hot as it is naturally. Uh, no need to add extra flair to it in terms of <laughs> doming Tom. Okay. Uh, with such vigor. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So the actual 100% story, yeah. As, as little steam and hot takes as possible. Uh, <laughs> well, the steam might be there, but we, we want it to be, give, we want some organic steaming takes plopped. Gotcha. Okay. So, <laughs> lots of fiber. <laughs> uh, USDA approved. Um, uh, so, but of course. so, it was about a year and a half ago uh, when me and Kylie first were invited out to E3. Um, I mean, it was, I remember actually when it happened, we were sitting down in like the little breakfast area, having like the free breakfast that the, the hotel offers you in the morning. And she's like, Hmm, this guy just messaged me and wanted to know if we wanted to do a podcast. And <laughs> it, it honestly, I had just started, you know, listening to a bunch of game of Thrones theory podcasts and all this other stuff. I just started getting into listening to podcasts myself. And I was like, I might not, that sounds kind of interesting. Like what, what does he want us to do? What is, what is his ideas? And, you know, it, it kind of, that was just the initial thing. It was, it's kind of funny because my guy at work that I, um, that I share the office with, you know, I've kind of been telling him like, Hey, we bought a mic, we bought the mics. We're finally going to get this podcast thing off the ground. And he just asked me today, you know, how, how did I meet Tom? And it was just because Tom went out on a limb and was like, Hey, would you guys want to do a podcast? I'm thinking about starting a podcast network. And over the last year and a half, you know, me and Kylie have had, you know, kind of personal things go on, haven't been able to acquire the right equipment. You know, we wanted to do it right, have it sound right, sound professional from the beginning. And thankfully for Black Friday, the Blue Yeti mics were like $40 off and here we are. So what, what, what do you guys do? Like what, why do you, why were you at the conference that weekend? She takes, I, I have a very loose understanding, but okay. she has an Instagram feed at the very least that she takes of Nintendo figurines. Sure. Um, was that where the invite came from or? So to kind of start it out, I guess a little bit from the beginning to give, I guess the cliff notes version. Um, in 2014, I purchased Kylie a nice DSLR camera for her birthday. DSLR camera is like one of those that you can switch the lenses out on. It's um, the one I had purchased for was like a couple steps down from the highest level you can get in terms of just the the model. It was a Canon T3i and she started taking pictures of, you know, her different little figurines I had purchased for her. The, the, the figures we typically use are made by a company called Good Smile. They're out of Japan. They do a lot of anime figures, a lot of video game figures as well. And I had purchased for her the... Wind, Wind Waker Link, and he's kind of a cartoon. He's got a little bit of a big head to begin with, but the character himself uh, looks pretty accurate to the actual video game. And she just started taking pictures of that with the camera, just kind of messing around. She'd always kind of set up scenes in her room with like her figures and things, and people would comment and kind of say, your room's almost like a museum, like the way that you have like little scenes and stuff set up. So it just transferred from actually setting those up to taking pictures of them. And over time, it's just kind of crazy. Like I'll flip back from even just a year ago, looking at the pictures that we've taken and how much they've evolved. Uh, so she started taking pictures of these, these figures kind of in different little sets. And then ultimately what transpired out of that was she had taken a photo for 2016, the new year. It was like Mario and Luigi jumping and there was like some glitter confetti kind of falling down and she had stamped, you know, in a editing app like 2016 above them. Nintendo saw the picture. They actually messaged her directly on Instagram. It's like, hey. So crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, she was absolutely freaking out when when this happened. Um, and they're like, hey, we really like your picture. We want to know if we can repost it. And it, it hadn't been the first time they'd actually just up and reposted one of her photos, but this was the first time they actually wanted to use it for their New Year's post. And it kind of opened the door at that point. Uh, a couple couple weeks, not a couple weeks, a couple months later, 
around March of 2016, the remake for Twilight Princess was coming out on the Wii U. And we got an email asking, you know, hey, how quickly can you take, you know, take photos? We would like you to take pictures of the Wolf Link amiibo and would want you to send them back to us so that we can post them. And, you know, we had the you know, lady contact us. She actually called and talked to Kylie for a while. We did the pictures. They loved them. Uh, shortly after that, Kylie took a picture for Easter. It was a picture of uh, Mario and Luigi hunting Yoshi eggs. She sent that to them just kind of on a whim, like, hey, hope you guys like this. I took this for Easter. And they loved it so much. They're like, we really appreciate all your hard work. We love your work. And we want to know if you want to be a brand ambassador. Uh, so they sent over these. Whoa. Yeah, pretty crazy. We didn't even know what a brand ambassador. Which means what exactly? Well, that's kind of, it, it, it's what I get ready to say is we didn't even know what that meant. I started like Googling like brand ambassador. What's that mean? And a lot of times companies will do this brand ambassador style thing to be an affiliate of their company promoting their products and being a media influencer that, you know, in hand in hand, they're getting the favors from Nintendo and Nintendo's getting publicity in, in, in return. So they sent over these agreements, you know, it's probably 15, 20 pages long, I think. Uh, NDAs, <laughs> wow. you know, non-disclosure stuff. It was kind of crazy. It felt like we were signing our life away. And... You know, they actually sent two, one for me and one for her. So technically we're both brand ambassadors and we sent that back. And ever since then, you know, it seems like most months you know, they contact us asking if, you know, we want to cover a certain game, talk about a certain game. Uh, we get those review copies usually a couple weeks early. We are able to play the game. And then with, with each of those games comes an embargo that you're allowed to these are the things you can say. These are the things you can say and when you can publish them. And that's more or less how that relationship started. And that was in April of 2016, maybe late April. And then only a few weeks after we got onto the ambassador program, we got an invite out to E3. And again, Kylie started getting really, really excited. Didn't, didn't know how we were going to pull it off. And we managed to pull it off and we flew out to L.A., I didn't have a lot of vacation time for my work, so we landed super late on Monday night. The, the conference was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so we only got like one hour, two hours sleep, uh, given the time delay and everything, because you lose, you gain time going out. So we had left at like 10 o'clock our time, and we landed at like 11 o'clock their time, but it felt like mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning. And it was just, we, we didn't have a whole lot of time, but then we got out to the- And E3 is just gaming or- Yes, yes. It's, what, what conference is that? It's it's short for Electronics Entertainment Expo. The big three, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, uh, along with a lot of other game developers, Bethesda, Ubisoft, uh, CD Projekt. Do most brand ambassadors get a ticket to go if they can provide their own transportation or- Yeah, so I believe it's uh, like a- they only have so many passes, but it gets that that blast, that email blast, I believe gets sent to all the brand ambassadors. So then it's a matter of, well, you need to respond and reserve the fact that, you know, hey, we want to go so they can save that ticket for you. Um, when we actually pick up our tickets, we have to have like our driver's license and like, the, the you know, it's 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 pretty airtight in that. You can't just say, oh, here's your ticket. And they, they give you a, like a print off, you know, like a movie ticket where you can just scan it. You actually have to pick up and they, they double check your driver's license and the address and everything. Make sure you're who you say you are. Uh, the tickets themselves are, you know, I know now they've opened it up to the public this last year, but media passes usually run around $900 to $1,000 a piece. Whew. So us being able to go is a huge privilege and obviously huge thank to, thanks to Nintendo for providing those tickets. Uh, but yeah, you have to, you do have to say, hey, I want that ticket and they, they confirm it and give you like a, a redeem code that you can then register on the E3 site. Uh, so, yeah. So does the podcast or is the show going to be a, a continuation of the scenes or is it, is it part of the brand ambassador contract or, or when did this kind of idea come in and is it part of what you're doing or is it separate? So at least some of the things that we've talked about with Tom 
and me and the things me and Kylie have kind of bounced back and forth in, in regards to this. Uh, I definitely want to, we've, we've mentioned this since the last time we were out there in June of this year, we had talked about, you know, the fact that we were wanting to do this podcast and, you know, some of the people uh, that are our contacts with Nintendo thought that was a pretty cool idea. I'm not sure truly if there's any other brand ambassadors that have a podcast. Uh, when I was talking to my buddy at work, just talking about YouTube and different, you know, I know how you feel about YouTube, Pat, but, you know, <laughs> different. YouTube is a fine website. It's uh, the YouTubers that, uh, well, I don't, we'll just, we, we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just the different media outlets. Uh, I don't, not a lot of people, I think, have hopped on the podcast train. It's kind of this weird outlier, but I think it's a great way to to kind of absorb information and you know, I, I got hooked onto audiobooks and this is just a more updated audiobook to me in in terms of the media. So when we went out there and we mentioned it, they thought it was pretty neat and we didn't really have a whole lot fleshed out in terms of what content we wanted to have on each episode. But uh, I think to ultimately answer your question, I feel like it's going to be an extension of what we already do. Uh, Kylie and I have both talked about wanting to have like an artist of the week and she features them on her Instagram. And I, what I would love to see is, you know, obviously we have this segment on the show each week, but I'd like to get to a point where maybe we have an artist of the week and we have that person on for a little mini interview within the podcast. I'd like to bring other brand ambassadors that maybe only have like a social media page and don't have any outlet to actually talk about what they do um, to actually get on the show and talk about what they do in a more maybe user-friendly format and being able to put out more information in a single blast than, than a normal post might be able to, to expound on. Right. So I think it's, it's something that she wants to do to explain more about her, her work and what she does photo wise. And I think she wants to do it to extend the community that she's created uh, I don't know if how big is that community? If uh, she has forty six point four thousand followers on Instagram, real close to five k on Facebook, and like two k, we're real close to two k on Twitter. Um, and the and the wow. big thing that she does or has always tried to do, and it's even been a point of contention in our relationship. But I've had to been the one to step back because I wanted to let her have you know this outlet. Is she? she comments or tries to comment on everybody's response yeah, to yeah. create this interaction. And that was one of the big things that Tom pointed out when he started inviting us onto this was the fact that she takes the time to reach out to those people and talk to those people and make them feel like you're not just another person. You're not just another follower. Like I care about you. And she does. And so when we're sitting here trying to watch, you know, our shows or talk about things or do things in the house, and she's glued to her phone. At first, it was very, very hard for me because I want to. I want to spend quality time with my wife. I want to enjoy those moments. But you know, I've I've felt for a very long time that you know, there's you know, faith is a big part of my life, and I feel like she's been called to this. I think this is something that she's you know been led to do, and I feel like she has a gift for it, and. I'm just trying to allow her to explore that in whatever way possible. And it's taken a lot of patience on my part, but I feel like it's allowed her to maybe stand out a little bit from the rest of the crowd because she has this interaction. Well, it's definitely opened up a lot of doors. I mean, you guys are legitimately brand ambassadors for Nintendo, right? So, I mean, it's pros and cons of everything, every decision in life, I suppose. Right, but right. And it, it sounds like the positives, hopefully they've outweighed the negatives. It, do, would you feel that way? Or, or I guess you guys haven't even started the journey yet. You could also argue because you're kind of just beginning. Yeah, it's it's been, so it's been close to two years now with Nintendo, probably, you know, if you want to say closer to a year and a half. This last year when we went out to E3, we were able to sit down with them and, you know, have some conversations about the future and, you know, what they want out of the relationship and, and what she wants out of the relationship. You know, what she does for Nintendo is a little bit different than most other brand ambassadors. 
she's generally trying to create content for Nintendo. That's been her main goal and drive. And not to pigeonhole any other brand ambassadors, but, you know, they're creating content for their channel, uh, their own brand. Uh, the feedback that we have received from Nintendo is Kylie is the only or one of the only ones that is sending content to Nintendo to actually share for their page rather than solely for her channel. And mm -hmm. that kind of puts her in a little bit of a unique position. And she's just trying to capitalize on that and continue to remain relevant to them. And so when she goes in to pitch the Ron Carnage, you know, first person shooter video game, yeah. how's that meaning going to go? <laughs> well, I think Nintendo likes to have a, you know, like, like Zelda, you think Link. When you think Mario, you think Mario. When you think Donkey Kong, you, you know, you picture, you know, an ape with a little curly cue. When you hear Ron, Car Ron Carnage, you need to think Nerdy Octopus. So I think the Whoa. Nerdy Octopus branding would be perfect for, you know, the mascot. And that's that's what we want to pitch is is to. I was joking, but I'm like, you must crush a job. Interview. <laughs> Have you ever had a, a first date or a job interview not go well? Like you. <laughs> Tom and I are just wanting to give you money as soon as we start asking questions to you. Um, I mean, I've only like, had... Hey, Nintendo, what's up? Do you want to, like, be part of this? <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've, really, I've really only had two jobs, two serious jobs. Oh. So, um, I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, I would say. I would say it's going swimmingly. But, uh, yeah, the Nerdy Octopus has kind of come in and stole the show. Um, maybe we could... I don't know. So you, you, I guess, are, I don't know, probably the only person who actually pay, pays attention to the show as closely other than Julie and Matt. And well, I guess we got the-, the, the whole, We have the whole ice team. What are you talking game. about? That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. But it's rare to get, uh, um, to hear the nerdy octopus mentioned from anyone other than Tom, I suppose. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, uh, as, as he kind of said that one day I, I drew- the stuff on my arm because I have, you know, I was actually drawing it during the podcast because again, I couldn't talk. So right, I was, uh, and then I sent the picture because you guys couldn't hear me. <laughs> or see you. What did you say? I said, or see you. Oh, yeah, right. You yeah. were in the studio, but it was, there's like a closet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. My chair actually backs up to yours, but you know, you don't even turn around. <laughs> right. <laughs> So when's what's what's the launch date, guys? What's um launch date? What what what? what yeah, is twenty eighteen. I think is January twenty eighteen. I think will encompass. Yeah, that's that's kind of the hope. Um, okay. Right now, um, we have a graphic designer who um he's booked up for the rest of the year, but um said that January he should be able to get um get to it. Um, so we're gonna have artwork. And we already have some intro music, right? Yeah. Which I yeah. I don't know if I sent that to you, Pat. I think I did. Um, I've pretty much been sending you everything, so I'm super hyped about it all. Okay. You and, did not, uh, but So we got this guy. Uh, his name is Jeremy. I met him at Podcast Movement. His job is to launch podcasts, and he is very, very good at it. He's been very successful. Um, he's worked with some like multi-million dollar companies launching podcasts. So he, I'm going to be doing a kind of a work trade with him so that he can help us with the launch of the show. Um, we're going to have a call next week. It, it's like really going to be the first show that we've taken like to this level. And it's what I would like to set. I, I want to, you know, set the bar with, um, with captain and admiral. Like I want, you know, the quality of the artwork to be, um, to be set by, set by theirs and have like a huge launch, right. With a huge campaign behind it, get a lot of, so basically you're sending a message to those punks over at Ad Astra. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. They're, they're, they're still doing a good job. Much they're still doing really good. Jack and, um, uh, Newton. But yeah, it's, you know, we're hoping to really make some, uh, some pretty big waves so that, you know, Kyle and Kylie can, it, you continue doing what they're doing, you know? 
yeah, and do, just do be their an extension thing, yeah. of that, another expression. And yeah, just to go back to what Kyle was saying, the reason that I even hit up Kylie in the first place is that she's so engaged with her followers that it like really stood out to me because that's kind of what I want the whole network to be about is talking to the listeners and really building a community. And I thought she would really kill with that. And um, yeah, really glad, you know, after talking to them, I found, you know, Kyle was also on the other side of that and now we're friends and uh, yeah, it's just, it's been a good experience overall and I'm super hyped to, you know, see it, see it moving along. Cause yeah, I think I hit them up in like August of 2015 or something. 16? No, 15. Yeah. It, no, it would have really? been, it would have been 16. Oh, okay. Yes. That's when we went to 20, E3. I literally just said this minutes ago. Were For you paying sure. attention? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we have another discrepancy like this where you said it was like 2014 or something like that? My life is a blur, man. Everything, every year since high school has just been, you know, I don't even know what it is. You want to go ahead and finish that, Tom? Because in one of those years you met me. And that was the best year of your life. It was, which is almost exactly a year ago from like today when we moved out here. Yeah. Which is a hell of a line for a, a year ago. Year a year like, ago, which would be. Today's the, what, today's what, the day what you, made, that, you met me. What year was the best a year ago? Oh, was God. 2015? 2016. <laughs> Pretty sure it was 2016. There we go. There you go. We're on the same page here. Thanks, Kyle. Tom, are you qualified to run my podcast? D- no. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not qualified to do anything that I'm doing right now, but it's uh, it's a good time. People seem to enjoy it, so uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so, Kyle, we're going to keep you around for one more talking point, if that's all right with you. Um, Tom had some leftover house- housekeeping things to touch on from last week's episode, which was where uh, where Tom should move. Um, it was one of our more chat-based episodes, I guess. Recently, we've been doing more... Some Tom DeLonge stuff, some Taylor Swift stuff. But um, anyway, Tom had some stuff prepared and he wanted you to comment on the Cincinnati angle. Is yeah, that right, Tom? Yeah, so before we get to that, I just want to say that um, a listener, friend of the show, a friend of mine, friend of ours, Amanda, uh, reached out, I think it was uh, last night or this morning, um, after listening to last week's episode saying, Pittsburgh might hit all the all the points that I was talking about with a with what I'm looking for in a city to move to. And that really got me thinking because I think the biggest appeal of Cincinnati is you Pat and you Kyle and just having friends there, you know? Like I I don't think I would consider Cincinnati if it weren't for people that I love being there. But it, right on the same token, like if you guys were in Dallas, Texas, I also probably wouldn't consider it. So I think it's like the perfect blend of just being a very average place that isn't too much of anything with greater than average people, you know? Um, I don't know. And, and I, I appreciate just, that highest compliment, Tom. <laughs> I love being greater than average. I don't know. I don't know if if you have anything to add to – the um, selling points of Cincinnati because right now it's only on my mind because I don't know if it's a mixture of just me being so lonely in Denver, but also not wanting to go and meet people because I haven't really vibed too hard with many of the people I've met is Cincinnati just a cop out to like not try to have to make new friends because there's already people there. I think if you wanted a, a blah cop out, move to like Lubbock, Texas or something. You know what I mean? Like go to West Texas. I mean, there is definitely, if you want the blah, you can find right. the blah. I don't know. Uh, and we can let Kyle to speak to this. But uh, in Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, I think are similar in a lot of ways. But yeah, go get them, Kyle. Knock his socks off, will you? That's why I'm here, to drop the steamy hot takes. That's right. Uh, That's right. Well, I'll start off with, I hope this isn't the last segment I'm on because I want to talk about my highlight of the week and my song of the week. Oh, so. I'm prepared prepared. to finish this bad boy out. Um, Is that a laminated resume? uh, I think this is me saying I got the job and you guys are just going to deal with it. I'm into it. I mean, I do like to Dom Tom. (laughs) Although. That was his nickname in high school. (laughs) Dom Tom. Dude, that's all my my social media names are changing to Dom the Tom. All right. 
So, anyways, <laughs> to drop this. That could be like a superhero named Dominic, like a really Italian, but he gets things to, he gets the things a day late, like tomorrow, Dom, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Never mind. I was trying to help you out and save that one, but it's like, hello, my name's Dominic, and I am not <laughs> Get everything done that tomorrow. That is the one thing people know about me. So he could say, I'm not right. prompt. Forget about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just uh, just many Italian stereotypes of which we will not list off super specifically now yeah. in succession. So here's here's what I'll say. Given the the relationship we have with Nintendo, the conversation between me and Kylie has come up. Would we be willing to move to, you know, out west to pursue that? And don't worry, I'm going to get to your question. Right, yeah. This is I'm 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 we're we're on the chain lift of the roller coaster right now and pretty soon we're going to be cresting the hill. So, when we thought about it and we've even thought about, you know, moving to Indiana where her parents are and you know, where in Indiana? Indianapolis. No, they li- live right outside of Indianapolis. Oh, okay. Uh I'm an I'm an only child, so I only have my parents as, you know, family that I'm really really close to. Uh, here in Ohio. I mean, I have my cousins and stuff. Not that I don't obviously care about them, but I more or less only see them on the holidays. So when we thought about moving, it, it's, it hasn't been a conversation that we haven't had. And then we think about Cincinnati. And even though we, you know, I have friends here, but the the last two years have, ever since we lived in the house, We've kind of just been doing stuff on our own, kind of more solitary, not spending a whole lot of time with other friends. And it was kind of that prime question of, should we even stay in Cincinnati? And as we started talking about other cities and other places to go, there was, I I could find more reasons to stay than to go. Does that make sense? Uh, Cincinnati is this little mini cultural hub of just what I would call uniqueness. You know, we go over to Indianapolis and it just feels like a city. You you know, we've, we've visited, you know, LA. I mean, even though LA is out West and you kind of have a a little bit more of a liberal atmosphere, I mean, it still feels kind of like a city and we, you get to Cincinnati and it's, it's tucked in all these Hills. There's tons of actual parks in the city that we've you know visited uh, something that we really liked to do this summer was this thing called the city flea and right across from music hall they have washington park and inside washington park there was 70 80 100 booths of just people who have their own business and would sell their goods and had you know business cards and had their own screen printing shop and this, this this lady had her own succulent nursery and this guy had an antique store that he ran. And I mean, I know I don't live in Indianapolis, but it didn't seem like Indianapolis really had things like that. Uh, me and Kylie this last year, money. Just as long as we're all okay with upsetting the entire state of Indiana, should we just make them the the place we don't mind scoring Wait, well? I didn't hear you. You kind of cut out. I didn't hear you. Oh, my apologies. I was just passing it by Tom real quick. Are we cool with just writing off the entire state of Indiana and just writing on them for the rest of the podcast? <laughs> existence? Just like- as, as long as St. Joe can be exempt from that, then yes. Why is that? Uh, I had a really good time there um, when I passed through. Uh, met some really cool people. Damn it. Now we have to do an Indiana episode. <laughs> a whole episode. Indiana, ultimately worth giving a shit about or not <laughs> worth giving a shit about? The the podcast debate continues. The podcast you've all been right, waiting right. and asking it's flat, for. Full of corn and beans and with the occasional wind farm. Two 20-somethings going through an aimless portion of their life. Discuss Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway. would be a terrible podcast. <laughs> Which, uh, at, at that point, is, does it become like part of the joke or something, I guess, to intentionally? It, would that be like a Tim and Eric thing, but nobody does it like they can? Like find the worst topics. We should do a show on Elemental FM of trying to make the worst stereotypical podcasts <laughs> and make all the mistakes on purpose. Um, I'm down. Matt Matt would tweet at us and be like, is that not what we were doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, uh, I thought that ironically was self aware. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Flipping it on its ear. Uh, anyway, so Indianapolis is the worst city yes, in the world. Um, is what that's I'm what he's saying. That. And Cincinnati is better than I, that. I think the things that have really stood out for us is, you know, I know what I was getting ready to touch on was it, it's been kind of tight for me and Kylie this last year financially. And we could, any, any given weekend, we could search things to do in Cincinnati and there'd be a plethora of things that were free. Uh, not to mention, like I said, all the parks that are available and are pet friendly. So, you know, take take the friends out of the equation. Um, what is the what, what, what's your ultimate goal in life? Right, it's to you know have a have a nice decent place to live, roof over your head, you know, food on the table, and you know if if you can make any you know, home is where the heart is. If if you can make any place work then okay what place would you want that to be uh i don't understand why us you know me and pat being here is such a point of like well i don't know if i should move there or i wouldn't even be considering it if you we you got well of course you wouldn't be considering it like who wants to move to cincinnati we have a terrible football team um <laughs> there, our sports teams are non-existent it's it it feels like a you know the armpit of the usa but when you actually get here and you take some time to consider your surroundings. Um, there's a lot of great things about Cincinnati. And I honestly didn't start appreciating it until I moved into my house. And like I said, me and Kylie were kind of doing stuff on our own. Found out all the city parks, Newport's right across the river, uh, which is kind of its own little gem. Um, you can walk across the river on the bridge to, and it connects between Newport and um, uh, Sawyer Point, you know. We, we especially when Pokemon Go came out, we were going to all the different parks in Cincinnati, and they have this beautiful river river walk um, along the Ohio River. Uh, it's just there's Jungle Gems International Food Market, which is baller. Uh, you can shop in Japan, shop in Korea, shop in Russia, shop in Germany, shop in Mexico, all in the same place. Um, <laughs> it's it, it, so if, if there's anything that I can say i guess to drop another steamy hot take for the vote on cincinnati it's well what do you want in life do you want affordable housing to make a you know a little home for yourself and have people you love around you i mean that's what i think everybody wants to do right like what's wrong with that and cincinnati has all those things so get over Very it. compelling yeah tom what do you want man Dude, I don't know. That's part of the biggest problem. <laughs> I wish I we know. had a steaming hot take buzzer that we played that <laughs> right before the um, roof over your head and hot mail on your table line, just like, this is this week's steaming hot take. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I, what I'm trying to say is you kind of hit the nail on the head, and we are here also, Tom, so... Yeah, well, I think um, I think it would be at least another year if we did anything because what? I know Megan. I know there's still a lot more that Megan wants to uh, learn at her job. Um, so I know that she's not quite ready to just pack and leave right now. She's in the middle of a few things, so um, that's kind of the reality of it. But I feel like I'm already mentally checked out of Denver. Whether I should be or not, uh, it's just I don't know, man. Uh, you're still new to town. It's it's tough. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you you you'll never know what could happen in a year. I, you might end up loving it by the time the decision would come back around. Probably not. Yeah, but, I I, um, I did just apply for like a really killer job last night. Um, so maybe I don't know. Maybe there is a reason. Although Amanda's not wrong, Pittsburgh. You know, I you know, like I said, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati are rather similar, but um. She raises a good point, and thank you for listening <laughs> after <laughs> all these episodes, of course. Uh, and thanks for the input. Well, do you want to uh, do you want to move on to the to the fine segments of the show? Yeah, I think uh, I think we might as well. Right. What jingle are we prepping? Now you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Does it play now, or do I do we have to be like say something before to ignite it? Um, and now for. You can do better than that, Tom. And now for... Now you know. I love okay. it. 
and I like that one way better. Okay. I, I think um, we should play now. You know, now you after know each each one. Just, <laughs> just eight different, but times. like mix mix the just first now again. you know like yeah. a little bit of minor keys in there, so it's like eh, nobody really <laughs> likes that one. And then in the second one, it can actually sound correct. You play it again right now. Just keep it coming. <laughs> just keep on the energy. Now you know. Now, 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 now you know. Uh, so this week we're doing uh, what turned out to be my emergency Thanksgiving dinner uh, that you can make very quickly, and it is very cheap. And uh, this might be useful to zero people, but this is this week's Now You Know. So it'll be just in case, stored away for a rainy day if you have to pull a Thanksgiving dinner out of your rear end in like an hour before the dinner starts. Um, basically, ham instead of turkey, um, potatoes, canned cranberry sauce, which some people prefer anyhow, uh, a can of carrots, a can of green beans, um, Velveeta mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and I think that was it. Anyway, um, basically, we cut up the potatoes real small and fried them next to the green beans and carrots, and then um, just fried the ham real quick and made the mac and cheese. I, th I feel like I'm missing a part. <laughs> oh, I guess technically opening the can of cranberry, but <laughs> all the parts felt like they were there, uh, to be quite honest. Once you take the bird part out, again, this isn't like, here's the tip to the best gourmet style, the fastest. Like, this is honestly last resort stuff. But, um, <laughs> it was cheap, and the ham's always tasty. I feel like there's a lot of ways to get a turkey wrong. Um, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, that was about it. But uh, it can be done, and it can still feel fulfilling at the end. Okay. I don't think that I could possibly prefer anything over that for now on. Like, there's so much pressure around holiday dinners. When you get rid of that pressure, right, anything's going to taste better. Because when you slave over something for hours, it's never going to taste as good as you think it should with all the effort that was put into it. So minimal effort, right? maximum payoff. Yeah, so like I said, my, my friend Kevin was in town and, you know, he was on potato duty and then I just basically heated – everything else was a matter of heating things up. But, um, yeah, you know, I think it, it worked out pretty well for what it was and mostly, you know, we enjoyed doing it together and then eating and watching the football on TV, which we didn't really pay too much attention to it. But um, it was just nice, you know. The pressure was totally gone and it only happened because I accidentally thawed – my turkey breast I had bought for he and I like days too early. I did not know that was like <laughs> keeping it frozen till the last minute is also kind of stressful. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so it, it just slowly went bad like a week before he even got there. Um, oh my gosh. He's feeling kind of gelatinous. So I don't know. But, to um, add another, uh, another vote to your quick Thanksgiving, uh, mine and Kylie's first Thanksgiving here in the house, uh, we said, you know what? Screw it. We're not seeing you guys. We're not seeing you guys. We're not seeing you guys. We're just staying in our house. Uh, we went to Kroger, bought one of the bakery rotisserie chickens, got a bag of steamable Ooh. green beans, got a little jar of the gravy, instant mashed potatoes along the same lines of you, and just, you know, I threw the rotisserie chicken in the oven, heated it up for a little bit, did the instant mashed taters, instant green beans, boom. And it was probably one of my favorite Thanksgiving dinners I've ever had. Yeah. I, I think I, if I had an extra half hour next time, and again, it would go against the whole ideolo ideology of, of the meal, the emergency meal. But real mashed potatoes I do love. My mom used yeah. to make those all the time. Um, if I had an – you know, if I had put any thought into it at all, basically. Uh, but I do like the idea – one year I made, when I was living in New Mexico, some pozole there and just made a, a huge container of it. And people came over and just kind of had – we just had bowls of that and it was very, yeah, like you said, it almost somehow was more enjoyable or more memorable. Because Unique of it how, was. The idea of just saying F it and going all barbecue is brilliant to me because barbecue is deli yeah. delicious. And I don't know, Thanksgiving meals taste good on the day because that's what you're expecting. But to a certain degree, how often are you craving that specific amount? You know, I don't know. Um, like, would you guys... I don't know. What would be your ideal meal that you could just choose? Like, maybe not necessarily on death row, but I think you know what <laughs> well, I'm Well, if my death here. row coincided with Thanksgiving and I had to pick a Thanksgiving meal for my last meal, is that what you're kind of asking? Because it sounds like what you're asking. 
Kind of like, I, I mean, you guys alluded to it at the beginning of the show. You can just choose anyway. So, oh, like, what okay. would you choose? Okay. Like, now, moving forward, if you had no tie to any traditional Thanksgiving meal, anyway, would you still choose the meal that's there on that day? Or would you just now do barbecue? So, is it like on? we're still trying to do Thanksgiving and this is going to be my last meal for Thanksgiving? Or are we completely breaking away from the tradition, like you said? And just having whatever meal we want, but then it wouldn't really matter if it was Thanksgiving or not. So what are you asking me? Well, now I'm confusing myself because <laughs> if you're going totally anti-tradition, do you just have a different meal every year? And at that point, Ooh. are you just getting away from what made it special in the first right. place? I'm getting sad somehow. <laughs> I mean, basically, like, what if if you weren't a sucker for tradition, what would you eat on Thanksgiving instead of, like, the traditional turkey stuff? Right, like Tom's dad, like the, the car- Chinese carryout or takeout. That would be... An option, I suppose. Like, what would you choose? Like, if you could make your own, like, what would you prefer to do on that day if you hadn't been raised doing I apologize. Else? I was thrown off by your death row comment, so that's why I asked those questions. <laughs> yeah, I just tossed it in there like it was just going to keep going, but it was kind of like a stark. Like, yeah, just imagine yourself. You've been in prison for decades, and they're about to kill you. Like, wait, what? I was t- totally following you until that part. Like, have I committed a crime? Because I was just trying to make sure, am I am I picking this... a meal that would still be for Thanksgiving but breaking tradition away from turkey if I could pick any meal? Or am I picking my last meal <laughs> right. for death row? Or is it a last row Thanksgiving meal? Let's do both. Give me your death row meal and then give me your new Thanksgiving okay. tradition meal. Okay, Who's, who first? Me? You, me. Kyle. Okay. So if it was my last meal – on this earth for death row i would have to have three gold star cheese conies with extra mustard and light onion wow tom that's like a it's like a cincinnati thing (laughs) again (laughs) you know you might have to be here to understand you know (laughs) it's basically cincinnati chili it's a it's a chili cheese dog is what it is All right, I'm but that's it. not a bad choice. Just go I mean, for that's it. like my my guilty pleasure, kind of a kind of a food. So that would be like sure. my last one. But I, I, I think I, if if I had my choice of Thanksgiving meals and what I would like to do, uh, I've never been a huge fan of turkey, so I'm usually on board for any other meat besides that. But I have to say, I was a big fan of the barbecue. It was. It was good. We went to City Barbecue, got the judges sampler which was like quarter bird, half slab of ribs, a little bit of pulled pork, some brisket, some sides, sweet cornbread. Can't go wrong. So I was having a little bit of each. And, you know, obviously I got the the barbecue sauce there, just smothering everything in it. I mean, whoo. What about you, Tom? What's your your death row meal? That's hard, dude, because I I don't know. Um... I do like a good burger, but it's got to be like an exceptionally good burger. Big fan of okay. steak as well. But also, dude, I had some uh, bleeding into the highlight of the week here. Um, some really good Japanese. Um, Don't cross the streams, Tom. Hot pot over the weekend. That Ooh, what's that mean? I, I don't really know. Is that the one where they have the different dipping sauces? No, it's I, – dude, I, I don't think I can really explain it that well, but Megan had a really good ramen that was like maybe one of the best things I've ever had. Um, that would also be a contender for Death Row. So the highlight um, was – um Yeah. I was know. the meal? One of those three. I'm not too picky. I'll I like the it. segue. It was smooth. I got to say. Ooh, I, don't, I don't even want to say my Death Row meal because this transition was okay. so smooth. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's play the hot takes a smooth transition. That's what this show's <laughs> about. And I'm sorry to step in, but um, it was just too smooth. Well, then take out my whole "don't cross the streams" thing, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because um, here at the show, we, we that's something we allow. <laughs> it's not something we vie for. But uh, if the streams were, it, it would be an understandable. Uh, <laughs> anyhow. So yeah, I'll I'll say my highlight of the week. I had a four day weekend, um, which was incredible. And Megan and I decided to say fuck it, let's go on a date, go out to dinner, throw it on the credit card if we have to. We're gonna go somewhere super nice, and uh, we went to this Japanese restaurant called Domo, and it's a restaurant, garden, and museum. <laughs> it's like really wow. interesting place, but it's authentic Japanese country food, and. Man, 
I'm going to have to start saving up to keep going back there. It was, it was great. And it was fun getting a little dressed up and, uh, just going on a date. It's been, I feel like it's been a while since we've done that. So it's a good time. Nice. What about you, Pat? I, um, uh, like I said earlier in the show, Kevin came to town. I showed him Cincinnati. Um, and it was almost too many days of relaxation. I worked the morning of Thanksgiving. Um, and then I had off until today, so like five days to just kind of hang. I'm realizing my body is not as durable as it <laughs> has been in years past. Uh, it was a bit too long of a binge, but it was a fun one. Good to see Kevin. Um, let's see, Kyle. Let's. I want to run this by you, see how many spots we missed or didn't hit. Um, but we, I took him to Wonder Bar in northern Kentucky. Um, Carew Tower. Oh, uh, the Winterfest? We went out to the Kings Island Light Festival thing only because we had free tickets. It was pretty good. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was all right. I, I imagine I if I had kids, Disney it World would be a lot more. Um, in, yeah. yeah. It was cool, um, but better with kids. Oh, yeah? <laughs> um, yes. Um, anyway, I'm going off on a dumb tangent. doesn't matter. It was a good week, and it was nice to see old friends per usual. You just cut off. You were like, you're, you're asking That's me which, I'm wrapping it up. which places you missed. Yeah, I, I give up. I already give up. You know up. what? I'm sorry. I Pat, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not how we're going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to bust out the defibrillator, and you're going to continue to ask me what places you missed. Don't give up on yourself, Pat. Oh, uh, well, it will be many. I realized after I mentioned I was already halfway through the list, like two items in, that I, I would have, it would have been a, uh, it was already clear to me that I missed many things. But, uh, so Yes. My apologies in return, Kyle, <laughs> but uh, we could list everything else to do. Um, oh, you know what? I did learn on the west side going to, uh, like, we went to Eden Park the first night, but then we went over to uh, Mount, uh, what's the, the west side park that overlooks the city. Um, Mount Adams? No, it wasn't Adams. It was not Orb either. It was, uh, anyway, like you said, great park system. But um, yes, it was good. It was ultimately a good holiday weekend. Cool beans. Kyle, what about Sweet. you? Well, it didn't necessarily happen this past week, but I've been riding on the uh, hype train ever since. Um, Go for it. My highlight is I'm going to be getting a puppy. Whoa. In a few, yeah. A few short months. So uh, I've been – we went – it was – let's see. It was – couple Fridays ago I've been following this German Shepherd page on Facebook and she does you know she's obviously out here in Ohio and she posted pictures of, of two all black German Shepherds and like pictures of previous pups from that from I guess the same parents and I was like oh are these two having another litter like I would totally want one if that's the case and then she commented that you know they were the the mom was essentially two weeks pregnant and they were taking deposits and I was like Kylie, <laughs> Kylie, we have to hop on this right now. Because like, like seriously, eight other people started flooding the comments. And was like, oh, I'm interested. How much? Oh, we want one. We want a male. And I was like, all right, I'm not letting this slip by. So I like messaged the lady via messenger. And then it like gave me like an automatic response with like her phone number. So I like text her phone number. And I was like, when can I come out there? And she's like, tomorrow sounds good. I was like, Six o'clock. Awesome. So we went out literally the next day and got to meet the, obviously the pregnant mom, got to meet all the, 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 you know, the lady and the breeders and everything and put a deposit down on a puppy. We were the first person to put a deposit down. So we'll get pick of the litter. Whoa. Uh, puppy will be born roughly around new year's. Do you guys have a name picked out? And then, yes, we do. May we ask which, what it'll be? Sure. So given the video game relatedness of what our podcast will be. Our first cat was named Sir Hammerlock, which is from the game Borderlands. <laughs> nice. uh, he's definitely fits his, his name fits his personality. He's, you know, comes off very regal. He always kind of looks over the room. He sits at the top of the staircase, kind of surveying the landscape. It's a strong name. You know, uh, yeah, he's got a lot to live up to, and I really feel like he he pulls it off. He always like curls his tail around his feet, like you know, I'm sitting here and I'm going to be prim and proper, and I'm going to be a good boy. <laughs> uh, our our second cat was named is named Handsome Jack, who is a villain from the same game Borderlands, and 
Jack is the villain you love to hate. He's hilarious. He's, you know, he always pokes fun at your character, uh, makes rude comments. He buys a diamond encrusted unicorn and names it Butt Stallion hmm. to um, taunt you with throughout the game. And uh, Jack, Jack, our cat, he very much fits that personality. He's crazy off the wall. Just, just today. Before we even got on this podcast, I was making a sandwich. I opened the fridge, pulled the ham out of the fridge. He hops on the counter and starts meowing incessantly at me. I'm like, no, Jack, you're not getting this ham. Yet he jumps by me onto like our little other shelf thing and knocks like all the containers off (laughs) and then like sprints off like and runs into the living room and knocks over and that was part of what I was what took me so long to get on here was Kylie had a photo setup she was doing that had to do with powdered sugar he like runs into the TV stand that she's working on and like knocks powdered sugar everywhere and then sprints off into the living room again and then like does like a backflip off the door and then sprints up the stairs <laughs> sounds like an awesome cat yeah he is pretty awesome and he's super affectionate like he wants to be picked up and held and like a little baby so that's kind of unusual for a cat, but Handsome Jack really fits him. So to get to your question, there's another villain from the Borderlands franchise uh, named General Knox, and he runs this big armory full of big guns that I would use on our heist. <laughs> and he's in like this giant mech, and he's a grumpy old man. And I just felt like with you know Captain Dangerous, Admiral Boogaloo that General Knox kind of fit that same bent of military offices sure. and, you know, was from the same game, keeping the same theme going. So General Knox will be ideally if, if we end up, cause I, th- I think once we get out there, we're going to, we're going to have to see, we'll get to meet the puppies at four weeks and pick which one we want. And we're definitely leaning towards a male. Ideally we'd like a male. Um, I found that they're typically a little bit more amiable, a little bit more friendly and affectionate. Females can t- tend to be a little bit more independent and stubborn. Uh, but if if the right one feels like a female, then we have a name picked out for that, and that's another character from the game called Mad Moxie. So we'd probably go with Moxie for that. That's awesome. So that I've been – like we went out there Sunday night, and I was up. I got like one hour of sleep that night. I was so excited. And then – like the you know the the days leading up to Thanksgiving, I seriously maybe got two or three hours sleep because I was just up all night thinking about it. And then we went to her parents' house like Wednesday night, and I'm like on the couch at eight o'clock, and I'm passing out because no sleep caught up to me. But on my phone, I have a countdown: ninety two days. Nice. So very cool. Yeah, my highlight of this month and the next few months. So. I was gonna say it's a hell of a highlight. We hope the, yeah, the cute uh, dog photos grace uh, the Instagram feed, and I'm sure will be the source of many good stories when the podcast launches for sure. Oh, I've already I've already secured General Dot Knox on Instagram. Oh, nice! <laughs> so, uh, in preparation, that's awesome. Want to do songs? John, John, John. Yes, uh, I listened to yours from last week, Tom. Um, it was called what again? Uh, Doomsday by Doomsday Architect. By Architect. And the f- first minute is very metal, and then the scream singing starts, and that is something I do not like. Um, <laughs> which is fine. Or, you know, anyway, I I could see why you like it very much, and uh, but I hope you can respect why I do not very specifically. I just, you oh, know. Of course, dude. I yeah. knew you wouldn't like it. The scream singing is just something that um, has not exactly been a thing that historically has tickled my fancy musically. So, um, but yeah, I mean, they rock hard to start. The music video is very crisp, very sharp. Uh, you said it was written about his brother who died, very emotional. Um, I could see how someone who's a fan of, of, of that vibe would embrace it fully and enjoy it thoroughly. But I do not. And that's not as anyway. That is my take on your. And that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, I listened to. Who was that again? Um, Mar- uh, Margaret. Mar- I don't remember. Uh, I was scrambling so hard to find something. Oh, um, bad. Anyways, I listened to it, and it was. <laughs> 
like I, I remember being like, okay, yeah, you know, I get it. And it was on YouTube and it started auto playing just like, you know, similar songs. And the next song that came on, I was like, oh, this is like a much better one. I like this a lot more. And it was one of your recommendations from two or three weeks ago. You son of a bitch. Was it Maggie Rogers? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was Maggie Rogers. And then, Which dude, one? and then after, um, God, the one that I thought seemed like a Haim or a Haim uh, video knockoff. Um, Alaska, the greatest song ever. Yeah, yeah, it was Alaska. To be honest, Maggie um, Rogers is my recommendation for the rest of the year. I just have to keep coming up with them for the show, for the segment. Okay. But yeah. anyway, what came on after that? And then it was like your recommendation from literally the week before Maggie Rogers. I was like, what the hell, dude? Like, how oh does gosh. YouTube know this shit? <laughs> Do you remember what it was by chance? Oh, God, I don't. I mean, I'm sure I can look through the... Well, the fine. Here. No, that's cool. Well, anyway, anyway, Maggie Rogers is something I'm just going to keep shoving down your... Um, well, you know... Pie no, hole? But, yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly what I was looking for. Pie hole, Tom. You, but your pie hole will be filled <laughs> with Maggie Rogers. Um, do you have a song for us this week, <gasps> Kyle? I have two. I have one that is more metal, so that will be more for Tom. And I have one that is not so metal. That'll be for you, Pat. Damn. Um, for you, Tom, the song and artist, respectively, is Break the Earth by Phineas. Cool. And Phineas is spelled, for those people who are out there and curious, P-H-I-N-E-H-A-S. Hmm. P. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like Phineas I might go as far as from... to say that is an unorthodox way of spelling what many people would have pictured to be the spelling of that band name. <laughs> right, right. Um, but "Break the Earth" is um, is probably my favorite song off the new album that they just dropped uh, a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago. It's been pretty, pretty awesome. It's pretty metal, but I love it. And because that was going to be my song. And then you're like, I don't really care for that. So don't give it to me to listen to my ear holes. So I'm going to give you something else that I've been rocking. So this okay. one's for you, Pat. Ooh. Um, it The song and artist, again, respectively, is Premonition of the Hex by Circa Survive. Okay. Uh, why, why does that name sound familiar? Were they, were they like early 2000s stars? Um, yeah, they, they were they, huge with a lot of our friends in high school. Oh, okay, like, I, 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 maybe I'm thinking Carmen of the Spill Canvas or something. They're I, from they're from uh, Pennsylvania, I believe. Oh, okay. I th I think um, I know the lead singer Anthony Green. Uh, yes, it says Philadelphia Circus Survived was formed by mm. former Seosin vocalist Anthony Green. So Seosin, that's Philly. a throwback. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Um, the original EP for Seosin had Anthony Green on it and he went and made Circa after he was done being on the West Coast, Dang. much like Tom should be. So, Ooh. um, <laughs> so yeah, Premonition of the Hex, it's off their new album called The Amulet and it's, man, it's, I was rocking that, that album nonstop until the Phineas one dropped. So, I mean, there, you can't go wrong with any song on that CD if you end up listening to it and liking it. It's, it's more ambient, uh, alternative post hardcore kind of stuff rather than metal. So cool. Being. Tom, I'm I'm good with letting those be the recommendations for the week unless you had something else uh, prepared. This is fine with me. I'd really didn't to be honest. <laughs> yeah, me so. neither. Kyle, you're saving us. Um do you want to end the show real quick? I liked your idea with, you know, I kind of swept under the rug uh the what we did or didn't do with my friend Kevin this past week. Uh, do you mind if we switch that a little bit and end the show with you? letting Tom know what you think we should get to when he's here next week. Just like sure. a quick in a nugget, what to do over the course of 72 hours. Yeah. Um, I know me and, uh, was it last night, Tom, that we talked? I don't remember. When, yeah, it was. Yeah. We were setting up the mic. Uh, I told Kylie about coming out with you guys on Friday night. And she's cool with that. Um, I don't know what bar they meet at, but I know 16 bit is pretty cool. It's an arcade bar. Um, the Rook is also pretty cool. Uh, board game bar both of those are kind of on the table and you know if we want if you want to kind of get a little bit of taste of kind of the nightlife but also a little bit nerdy nightlife and it's not so crazy because i'm not much of a partier either right um they're both fun places i've 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 been to both the uh 
arcade bars are hard to go wrong. They're all free too, right? The the play for all the games. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think as long as you buy something to drink, which doesn't have to be alcohol, mm. you can, they usually have like root beer or something that you can get. Everything's free to play. So um, those those I think would be cool to hit up like if during the evening. Uh, on Saturday, I think hitting some of those parks. I know you got um, – what's your dog's com- dog's name again? Is it Levi? I think it is maybe just yeah. possibly. Oh, yeah, definitely <laughs> Levi. Um, obviously, that was a joke for those who couldn't get it. And if you didn't get it, you shouldn't be listening to this podcast because you're not smart enough. Um, <laughs> Damn. Okay, I was cool with you writing off Indiana, but <laughs> let's just pump the brakes a little bit. Some of the people who might take offense to that may not live within the borders of Indiana, and I just want them to be cool with the program. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Obviously I'm I'm joking, so don't take everything seriously. But I think some of the parks and stuff around the city are are gonna be great to hit up. We typically go to Alt Park, that's like five minutes from my house. Uh Washington Park is good to hit up. They have like a little dog section there as well. And that's kind of right in the city. I think the the riverfront walk, um, which if you park park at Sawyer Point you can walk from there all the way in front of the stadiums. And that's kind of our three hot spots in terms of which parks we hit in the city. Obviously you can kind of hit any of them. That'll be kind of cool. Finley market is a lot of fun as well. It's kind of a neat little pocket of culture. Sometimes they have like live music and stuff out there along with, they got, I think they got like some specialty dog stores, some meat stores, some coffee and stuff. They might have some, I know Megan's into the, the, or should I say Liz, is into that herbalist <laughs> stuff. I think they have a, a, a spot down there for that as well. And then some of the, the local food, you know, you don't normally, that's not anywhere else. You know, have, have Gold Star or Skyline, whichever you, you, you prefer. Jungle Gems visit is a must, I think. But yeah, I'd say this, that's, it, it's worth the trek out. It's a bit of a drive to get out there, but I think, I think you're probably right. It's a sight to behold for sure. I mean, I think the the one in Eastgate might be a little bit closer than the one all the way up in Fairfield. Plus, I think the Eastgate one's laid out a little bit nicer. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, yeah, maybe we'll stick to the Eastgate one then. Because, like with the with the one in Fairfield, it's kind of like weird to actually get into the shopping section. Kind of have to go through that one little area, where like the one in Eastgate is in an old Bigs or an old grocery store. So it's kind of already set up to be like a grocery store. It still is cool though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely it, – it, it, to me, it's just easier to navigate. It makes more sense. Oh, okay. That kind of thing. Well, cool. We have uh, a, a to-do list, huh? And we will be seeing Sounds you and good, Kylie man. that Friday, you know, at, the, at least, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I think we'll – if as long as yeah. you guys don't care for us to tag along, I got we got some stuff to do during the day on Saturday, but we can kind of tag along maybe Saturday evening if you guys don't go someplace. Oh, I stopped recording. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. Wait, did the recording pick up you saying that? <laughs> Just like <laughs> we'll have to add in a yeah, dude, for sure um, at the right time when we're going to post. But uh, I think that should about do it for this week. Uh, Kyle, thank you very much for joining us and also driving most of the segments. You were way more prepared this week than we were. Um, and yes, yeah, nice to meet you. And the name of the show will be Captain and Admiral coming January 2018. And uh, yeah, I think. Hopefully people are excited and getting ready for it. I know Tom's been excited. So, uh, yeah, sounds super fun. Yeah, and if anybody who obviously listens to this one is going to hop over and listen to that, we're open to ideas on on different things that want to be covered. I think we're still pretty pretty flexible on what the podcast will actually be about. I mean, I know we have some rough ideas, but, you know, always open to interpretation and, and seeing what, what the what the fans want. That's right. What all the millions of fans want, they will get. Indeed. Cool beans. All right. Um, There will be links in the show notes to uh, anything that was relevant that we talked about. Elemental.fm slash reminiscent slash 53. And uh, I'll put uh, Kyle and Kylie's Instagram in there so they can follow them on that and uh, talk to them about what you want to hear. Thanks, Kyle. guys. Well, I mean, I've been here the whole time, so you That's don't really true. have to thank me for anything. Thanks for finally uh, <laughs> letting us let you chime in. And uh, you came on strong, and the energy was was very nice. Um, yeah. Tom, I'm going to let you actually finish it, Tom, because I'm horrible at this part. 
Bye. <laughs> <laughs> ba, 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 ba.